democracy in London. Oh. So, you know, time flies, but uh, it's, it's still one of the greatest experience I had in life, you know. And I left my native uh, country after the war, 1947. Oh. I came to the United States and uh, I was full of joys and happiness because uh, I saw the possibilities, what you can do. And uh, I loved America at the very beginning, and I still do. I'm one of the greatest Americans you can ever find. And, uh, well, I worked in show business most of my life. But how, about, how did you become Mr. Universe? Well, uh, Mr. Universe is one of those challenges. You know, I put myself up to challenges in life. And uh, I think it's one of the challenges. I, I was a gymnast. I was a good gymnast. And uh, somebody sometime uh, back in uh, late 40s, they mentioned, when I asked the question, so how do you become so muscular and yeah. so strong? You'd be how old about then? How old well, were you? I was too old for as he concerned. Oh. You see, that's exactly triggered off a whole show. I see. Yeah. He said, well, uh, you're too old to start weightlifting. Yeah, but you're probably as old as 21 or something like well, that. Well, exactly. Yeah. I, was about, I was about 22 years old. And that's old. too old. And that's what they said. I was too old to start God. weightlifting. God. And I said, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because you're never too old for anything. That's right. And uh, in a matter of fact, that's my great beliefs. You're never too old for anything. I mean, you can change your form of thinking in life anytime. Sure you can. Sure you can. So uh, that's kind of triggered me off in 1948, 49. And uh, I get interested in weightlifting. And I did it for about six years. And I start uh, developing muscles and I mean, you know, you look at me now, I mean, I'm a 45 pound lighter, you know. But been, you're still in great trim been, though, I'll tell thank you. Thank you. I, I try to keep you look great. trim and uh, that, that I feel better skinny than fat. You never gain weight living up here, let me tell you, <laughs> from the stairs that I've climbed. Oh yeah, listen, I climb up and down here <laughs> at least 30, 40 times a day, so, but it's a lot of fun. But actually, get back to Mr. Universe, yeah. I was fortunate enough to be crowned Mr. Universe in 1955. And uh, it's kind of like give me a different scope in life. How do you get crowned Mr. Universe? I'm, I don't understand the, the competition and so on. Can you give us some idea of, of well, what you go through? Well, it's, it's pretty much like it is today. But, you know, back in those days, in the 50s, it was uh, uh, more, uh, let's say, more in a primitive way it was handled. But this, we still had 150 countries represented 150 150 yeah which i don't thought is any countries like that exist but you know different little uh, uh, sure. uh countries and all over the place no no i'm sorry i'm confusing it 150 person 40 countries 40 countries yeah, 40 countries so 100, 40 countries. 150 150 so they're sending about four each sort right of thing. right yeah. right and uh uh, then, you know, they had their three-day session where uh, they tested uh, your intelligence, your figure, your uh, muscularity, and uh, uh, then after a three-days uh, contest, they decided that I was the best. You, so yeah. I, I flipped out, and I couldn't believe it, and uh, uh, I was very pleased. How did that affect your life now, becoming Mr. Universe? And what well, year was that again? Did you say 48? 49? Uh, uh, well, no, no, it was 1955. 55 when I that you became. Universe, yes. And where did this and happen? I, in London. Right London, in London, the Palladium. 55. Yes, yes. How did it affect your life? Uh, well, it's affected uh, enormously because, first of all, something I wanted and uh, something you want bad enough and you get it, you know, it gives you chills in your body, even up to date. And, uh, but what produces the chills? Just the dri the striving for it? I think a striving for it as as work, as work and determination, and that's exactly what I had: enormous determination, yeah. and I strive for it. But I think what gives you a chill when actually you get it? You get, oh, when you get it, yeah. When you get it, that that what really gives you a chill, and uh, not that you don't think you always think you're gonna get it, but there's a thin line where uh, you think, well. Like, uh, maybe this other fellow looks just as good as I am, you know. And I was at the point, it was a very interesting uh, episode because uh, uh, I was in a finalist and uh, 
the five finalists and uh, a fellow who was standing next to me, there was three of us standing for a second runner-up, first runner-up, and Mr. Universe. A fellow was standing next to me, he's right off the side like, he said, well, Mickey, he said, I won, you second. And I was over there congratulating him, thinking that he knows. And then they say, now a second finalist, and I was ready to step out to get my yes, second yes. place. And uh, uh, he's the one who went, and I stayed And there. you stayed and won. And, and, that, and that's where it was. Now, you came to the States, and how did you get involved in movies? You know, basically, all my life, I was in show business.